Hello everyone and welcome back to my channel. So in this video series we have been discussing about how to do anomaly detection in an unsupervised manner. In this particular video we will see how we can assemble various machine learning model to do this task without any label required. So first let's see what is assembled method. Ensembled means basically combining various methods together to find to get a more robust decision. So suppose we have our input X, which is um, which is a collection of various features. Then we pass it through a machine learning model one. Let's say the first machine learning model we call it ML one, and we get some output Y one. Same we do for various machine learning model ML one, ML two, up to ML M, and we get their uh, prediction Y one, Y two, and the last one should be Y N. Then we aggregate the output of each machine learning model to find a single output which should be more robust than a single machine learning model. Yeah, so Y is combined to obtain the robust decision. All right. So how we can use ensemble method in an unsupervised method, unsupervised way. So first we saw that uh, we need an X and Y, but how we can use this in an unsupervised way. So for that, what we are going to do so we have our input x and we need to reconstruct this x so that we can calculate the reconstruction loss and uh, according to a thresholding that we have been following throughout this video series we can uh, say okay if the reconstruction error is higher than this threshold we'll flag it as anomaly our input variable x we have various features for this case of uh, tendency eastman process we have 52 sensor variables and for the first machine learning model, we are going to mask the first feature, let's say X1, and we are going to provide it rest 51 feature to the machine learning model uh, ML1. And our goal is to predict the masked feature, in this case, X1. In the next case, we are taking all the 52 features, but we are masking only the second, fe the second feature or the X2. Then we are training it we are giving it to ML2, but our target will be X2. We want to predict X2 using this uh, ML2 machine learning method. And same, we are going to do for the all the all the features individually. And in the last, we'll have uh, we'll mask the 52nd feature. And our goal is to use first 51 feature to predict the last uh, feature, so that is X52. Now, from the prediction X1 to X52. We can combine that to find the reconstructed value of x, x hat and then using x and x hat we can get the reconstruction error and hopefully that reconstruction error will be significantly higher for the anomalous data set compared to the fault free data set and in the end what we can see here is uh, we have our input x that you can see that we have our input x which has 52 feature it goes into our ensembled method and ensembled method and it uh, outputs x1 x2 x4 x52 which is basically uh, if we combine them it's basically a, a reconstructed x then using this x hat and x we can calculate the reconstruction error now that we saw the overall method what we are going to do first of all we'll import both the faulty and fault free data we'll concatenate them to form a single data frame which will have uh, 55 columns who, which are basically the feature but these are the sensor value and rest are uh, the, uh, the organization of various uh, file number this is the number of fault the simulation run and the sample In the next step will standardize uh, standardize the input fault free condition now in the next step our goal is to train n number of ML models and ensemble their prediction as we saw in the PPT. So I'll import some necessary libraries. The import time is not necessary. And I'm importing two, uh, two machine learning model. This one, the hist gradient boosting is a light gradient boosting algorithm, but I, I, I didn't find good performance with that. So I'm just stick with the linear regression. You can try a various machine learning algorithm if you feel like GNT regression, SBM, K nearest neighbor, you feel free to uh, predict them. And uh, our two score is just to evaluate how the regression performance is. 
so let's see how we are going to do let's say uh, so as we saw in the previous uh, as you saw in the previous ppt our goal is to uh, in the first case we'll mask the first feature and uh, we'll try to predict uh, the first feature using rest all features so for that for the sake of example let's say the fifth feature I want to take is uh, my output and I'm going to use rest all feature to predict the fifth feature select n minus one features as input so in x will be my input feature or the training data and y will be my target which will be the fifth feature here we can see all the rows and uh, the number of the feature which is fifth basically this will be the sixth feature because I'm indexing according to Python and uh, then uh, what a list completion this list will be a list of all the feature that that will be my input so if I just put it here you see that it's 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 is missing here 5 is missing directly 6 so yeah now I split my data into uh, my features and target next step is to split them into training and test for that I am using the train test split and I am using a test size of 0.7 that means I have only 30% of data as my training is because just I need uh, a faster computation that's all all right and then I'm going to uh, fit a, reg a linear regression model I am uh, calling the re linear regression um, object then fitting it with x train y train and I'm saving that in ml model in the next step I'll predict using the ml model that I just trained on the test data to find what is the score so yeah so I'm getting a score which is very low the R2 score which is close to 1 is better for us all right so now like that I'm going to do for each and every feature and for that I'm going to create this for loop this for loop which will iterate through each and every feature 0 to 52 0 means the first feature and 51 means the 52nd feature and I'm going to create an empty list of ensemble models let's let's go through the uh, the follow first first I'll print which number of feature I'm training for and X will just like that it will exclude the feature and Y will include that feature because I'm going to take n minus 1 feature to predict the nth feature then I'm going to do a train test split I'm going to train the machine learning model and I'm going to append this new machine learning model into ensemble models ensemble models so that uh, uh, so in ensemble model list this uh, new machine learning model will be saved and I can call them later on and using this ML model I'll predict on the test subject on the test data set to find the error between y test and y print which will the R2 square and then I'm doing a scatter plot so between y test and y prep if this scatter plot will be a single y equal to x line that means my prediction is perfect but let's see I can see the results here for the feature one that means uh, the sensor number one the data is pretty good that means the whatever the input I have provided is pretty able to pretty accurately able to predict the output sensor 2 not that bad it's pretty good for most of the cases and you can validate it by your own self so if I say this ensemble models is the list of all the linear regression model that I have just trained I do I see that there are 52 learned models in there next we are going to construct a function which will reconstruct our input data by combining the results from an ensemble models like once we predict one is once we give it a uh, input x it will mask uh, sequentially first the uh, first feature then second feature then third feature and it will give us out sequentially so for that let's see divide the function into small segments and understand that then i'm going to transform that uh, temp data into x yeah now if i see the shape of x it's 500 cross 52 but 500 is the number of observation 52 is the number of sensors then I want to create an empty list which is X recon which means that uh, the reconstructed value of X I'll save here let's say uh, I'm, I'm trying to do the prediction for feature 
34 that means i will call the 34th model from this ensemble model list and i'll predict on that my input will be all the feature except for the 34th feature and if i see xi dot shape it's uh, 50 cross uh, 51 because the i'm already taking all the feature except for 34th except for the 34th feature this 34th feature will iterate through 1 to 52 so wait for that i'm just explaining the feature i'm explaining the function next i'm going to in the in the list in the empty list that i created x recall i'm append the prediction of the ensemble model so ensemble models feature will call for the 34th model and predict on this xi it will, it will give us the value of y which is nothing but the 34th feature and then i'm just going to append that in x recon and we can see that the uh, shape of x recon is uh, 500 but in the end after we do after we do it on a loop from 1 to 52 we'll have uh, we'll have 51 cross 500 data set then we need to transpose it let's see how 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 that's going to happen so this function we created now to see the function this is just uh, this all the all these cells are put together to create this function so first it will take the input data and the ensemble model list the trained ensemble model list first we'll initialize an empty list called x recon which means x deconstructed and then we'll iterate through all the feature from 0 to 52 first in xi we'll put all the entire data set except for the uh, feature and then we are going to predict using our nth ensembled mo nth model in the ensembled list to predict on this xi we'll save that in x recon so in whatever we are saving in x recon this part has a shape of one cross n all right and uh, after we do after this for loop after this for loop has ended we get x recon which is a shape of 52 cross n but we need to convert it to a shape which matches our uh, input x which is nothing but 500 cross like n cross 52 this one n cross 52 so we need to transpose it that's all then uh, once we get x recon array same as the shape of x we can just calculate the mean squared error and that's it it will do give uh, it will return two things one is the reconstructed value of x this one and the mean squared error this one that's it let's let's visualize the reconstructed data on one simulation run so i'm as this uh, entire ensemble model is trained on the fault free data let's uh, take uh, one uh, one sample run from there and i'm putting in this uh, function ensemble reconstruction the scaled data and the ensemble model list then i'm plotting that for each and every feature from the feature we can see that okay is uh, pretty well reconstructed not uh, sometimes it's not very good like here you can see that it's not at all well constructed but most of the time yeah let's say the reconstruction is uh, pretty good then i'm going to put a plot a histogram of the reconstruction error just like in the previous case you can see that it is almost follow a normal distribution with mean around uh, 28 or 29 and some uh, variance now let's see now let now let's this uh, plot this plot plot this histogram plot on top of various fault categories this functions this uh, function i have already explained in the previous video if you have any doubt you can please kindly refer back to those videos and there there, uh, there i have explained them in detail so you can see for fault number one there is a clear distinction between the distribution of fault free keys and the faulty keys same for fault two fault three is not good because uh, yeah because both the distribution are overlapping fault 4 is good yeah and like that like that we can see for various faults now that we saw the distribution of various faults on top of the normal distribution on top of the fault free distribution then to obtain the threshold i'm taking uh, mu plus 3 standard deviation and i get the threshold value as 44.86 Next, I'm using this 40, uh, this threshold value to plot the mean squared error for different fault scenarios. So, for example, here, 
fault number zero the black line is the threshold and the blue line is the mean squared error opting you can see that when fault number zero that means the fault free case i'm getting most of the cases are under underneath the threshold which is a good case the green line is suggest after this time the fault has been introduced for fault number one we can see it, okay, it can easily detect the fault because uh, as soon as it crosses the uh, it, as soon as the fault was introduced it crosses the threshold fault two also good yeah see for various faults but uh, yeah for fault number line nine we can see that uh, most uh, the most of the time the mean squared error lies within the threshold that means we cannot identify fault number line fault number nine then we are going to obtain the f1 score this is a function to just uh, convert this entire graph into a binary function of zero and one zero means no fault one means the faulty condition i obtain the f1 score for each and every case this is for the healthy healthy case this is in fault number zero and in the end i just combined all these uh, results to get an average score of f1 score and accuracy score after that i found an uh, f1 score of 0.69 and an uh, accuracy score of 0.818 which is the highest till now so if you come to this area uh, this repository of mine in uh, github the link will be given in the description you can find uh, the performance of various method so for now for the ensemble learning we found a uh, accuracy uh, f1 score of 0.69 and accuracy score of 0.81 which is till now the best performance Okay guys, so that was it for this video and I'll see you in the next video where we'll see how we can implement convolution neural network or a recurrent neural network for fault detection in an unsupervised manner.